Thanks everyone for joining the session. My name is Adam and welcome to Vespa Technologies. So what are we going to do in this series? Now, we will try to implement a project to automate the infrastructure needed for a two-tier web application. Now for that, we would be using Terraform. And when we say Terraform, we need to understand Terraform works in the concept called infrastructure as a code. So what are the best practices that we are going to use in order to implement the infrastructure as a code concept. So that way, in this series of video, let's first start with understanding how does the two-tier architecture look like. And for this, we would be using the Terraform with AWS to automate the infrastructure. So now when we say that uh, we need to create an infrastructure in AWS, now as soon as you log in, with your default account, right? Or whenever you have created your free tier account in AWS, what you will be logging in as a root. So in an organization, you will not be working in the same way. So instead, whenever we log in, we would be having a separate user account. And in the same way, now for a particular project that you want to work, eventually you would be having a separate network created and all those components or resources, whatever that you're going to create and work will be within a particular network. So in AWS, if you want to have a private network where you will be running your machines or application for a particular client or a project is what we call it as VPC. So the very first thing we need to make sure is we are going to create a specific VPC and within which you're going to create your infrastructure needed to run your web application. Now, when I was talking about a simple two-tier web application, so the major two components, what you would be having in them is a front-end application, which is what we call it as the web server side or the web application. Now think of something like a Java project, or you can also have a node project or a PHP. Now, this is what is going to basically act as a front end where users will be logging in or communicating. And for this, you will also have the other part of your architecture where you would have a database in which this application will be communicating and fetching the data. Now, a simple example that I can give this, you open your browser and you just say, uh, you know, www.facebook.com or linkedin.com. So what do you see is a front end, right? But from where does it fetch the data which is needed for you to see in that page? So there will be a database on the back end which will not be accessible, right? So in the same way, now what we are going to do is create a machine in which we are going to kind of run your application which will be acting as the front end and you are also going to need a machine in which you are going to run your database so in that way these are the two important components that you need now what and all is needed from an aws infrastructure side that will help you to work and communicate between these two so in that way now as i said we are going to first have a separate private network, which is what we call it as VPC, and all the services, whatever we are going to create will be within that. However, as we go a little deeper, we know all the resources that we create will be within a region in AWS, because you can broadly classify the entire AWS into region, and considering that, you know, I work close to Mumbai region, so Mumbai is the region that I will be picking up to create all my resources. But within a region, there will be many data centers in which the actual resources will be created. And that is what we call it as an availability zone in AWS. So in that way, now to make sure that our machines are always running, I would like to take in this example, two separate availability zones and the machine which I'm going to run my web application will be hosted on a particular availability zone. And the same way, if we are going to have a machine for the database, again, that should be created in a separate availability zone. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. Then what else? Now, as we talk about 
VPC, your resources will actually be within another layer of your network, which is what we call it as subnet. So eventually, now, each of the machine that we are going to have, whether it is your web application or your database, should be residing inside a subnet. Now, however, when I say a subnet, so we have two types of subnets that we can create in AWS. One is public and private. Now, what's the difference between these two? So eventually, anything that you have inside your public subnet will be accessible from internet, provided you give proper rules in your security group. But what do you mean by a private subnet or the components inside the private subnet? So in simple understanding, a private subnet is that which will not be able to communicate to outside world or the resources inside the subnet will not be able to communicate to the internet. So such a kind of subnet where it will not be able to communicate to internet. However, it can communicate between any other resources within your same VPC or network. So such a thing is what we call it as private. Now, how is that we are going to set up a public or a private subnet is what we are going to see further. Now, once you create your subnet and within which is what your actual machines or EC2 server will be created. Now, along with this, what we are going to do is whenever a traffic is coming from internet and if it has to reach to our machines, which is available in a subnet, the first component that will allow the traffic in your VPC is called as an internet gateway. So for every VPC, you should be having at least one internet gateway, which will be helping us to send the traffic from outside to within the network, or the same way any traffic that is coming from these resources going out to the internet should also go through the internet gateway. So that way it acts as a gateway to help to flow the traffic from internet to the services inside it or within the network whatever the resources you have will try to communicate to the internet through it now once the traffic from the internet comes through the internet gateway which is associated to your vpc the next thing what you're going to have is called as a root table now what is root table now basically root table is another component of your network which is vpc and this will be basically consisting of all the details about whatever the resources you are going to have in your network or in your subnet that is if you have a machine when someone tries to do a ssh or connects to it now the internet gateway will send the traffic to root table and root table knows where exactly is the ip or the resource what you want is available and based on that it will be sending the traffic to that particular one okay however when the root table is trying to send the traffic to a particular instance now we would have another layer of network which is what we call it as a security group and what this security group is going to do is have a set of rules which will tell what kind of traffic should be allowed from outside to reach to this particular resources or the same way anything from this particular subnet or the resource should be reaching to the external world. So that way, now the security group is the component where you are going to specify the rules which is inbound rule or outbound rule. Now, since we are going to have a web application, now a web application needs to be allowed to communicate to a particular port number. So let's say I'm going to run Apache and it is going to be exposed to run on port 8080. Then what we should do is, from external world when someone is trying to access this, port 8080 should be allowed. So only that way, if a user says this IP address of this machine colon 8080, the traffic will come to internet gateway and that will come to root table and that root table will be going through the security group and security group will say, okay, port 8080 is allowed. 
go to this machine so that is how you will be able to connect to the application the same way now if you want directly to connect to the machine then in the inbound rule you might also have to add your ssh rule so this way what are the rules which is needed to communicate to the machine is what we are going to put it in the security group but if you notice here we are going to have a separate security group for the web application alone so that way in this security group we are going to allow port 22 to do the ssh to this machine and port 8080 so that you can access the application and this is where if you see this subnet whichever is going to have the application is going to be called as public subnet this is because whatever the resources that you have inside the subnet will be accessible by internet so if you can see this flow whenever someone tries to reach this the traffic goes to internet gateway and from the internet gateway to root table and from the root table it knows that it is available in the subnet but based on what kind of inbound rule that you are allowed it will try to go to this machine so this is how if a traffic is able to reach to your subnet and the machine and the same way the traffic from here can be reached to outside internet then this subnet is basically what we call it as public now as i was talking about this if you look into the database side we don't want to connect to the database as a user right because when you log into your facebook.com or linkedin.com do you even know that there is a database available or are you trying to connect to the database no but who has to connect to the database the web application which is running inside it so that is where now we are going to make this machine run inside a subnet which is private which is nothing but there should be no access to the subnet from the external world and that is where we are going to create a new root table which knows the details about this subnet and whatever the machines or the database which is going to run and that is where now we are going to have another security group where for example if you have a database like mysql then your mysql might be running in a port for example 3306 then anyone who is going to connect to this application or the database should be accessing it only through the port 3306 and that is where we are going to now create a new security group which will allow only port 3306 to be reaching this subnet and the machine inside it and now if you look the root table is not associated to the internet gateway so that is where whatever the traffic that you want to go through will be only between the resources within this vpc so nothing from the outside world can communicate to it so that way as a user you will be communicating only to your front end of the application and the application will be trying to communicate to the database within this vpc and that is where this subnet is called as private subnet where the root table associated to the subnet is not connected to any internet gateway okay so this is our simple two tire application now for this we are going to create a infrastructure as a code wherein now you need to create all the separate components like vpc subnet and then internet gateway and for each of the subnet you are going to have a separate root table and this root table should be associated to the specific subnet so that it knows what and all are the resources or what we call as the machine is available now if this is completely confusing let us understand it in a simple way or in a layman term okay now think of this like a it park so let's assume you are going to marathali okay which is one of the popular places in bangalore now there are a lot of it park now what you want to do is you want to go to a particular company so that way think your vpc is like a it park now if you have to enter your it park you are going to have a big gate in which the security will be there and they would be allowing only certain people based on whether they are employee or you could be a guest or maybe there could be someone who's trying to deliver or there could be some supply people so that way now 
the main gate through which we all will get into it or come out is what you can consider it as a internet gateway now as soon as you go inside your it park there will be many buildings or sometimes we call it as wings right building a building b building c so there will be many buildings within this particular it park so that each building can be considered as an availability zone however now as soon as you go to the gate you will not be knowing where is the building so that is where near to the security if you usually see there will be a huge signboard which will be saying that there is a company called abc now if you want to go there that is on the left side or there is a company xyz and that is on the right side or there could be another company which is quite far in the end so there will be a route map which will be telling you where you have to go or what is the path you have to take so that is what exactly you can compare it as a route table so which basically tells that which building you want to go and where is that building now once you go there we again know that for a particular building there might be several floors right now your company might be hosted or running in assume that there is a particular floor of a building or maybe in two or three floors so what you have to do now you need to specifically go to that particular floor right so that way even though we have an availability zone in that you are going to create something called as a subnet which is what you can think like a floor in which your company will be there so that way using the route table you will be going to the availability zone and in that to the particular subnet and again like you go to the floor but once again as soon as you go to the floor there will be a reception for the company who will again do some basic check wherein let's assume there could be two kinds of lift there could be one lift for employees and there could be another service lift where we will be bringing up the goods or any other items so that is the same way now when you want to access your resources into your subnet you will be having your security group which will say who should be coming and who should be going out okay so this is the best way that will be helping you to kind of understand and now whatever i'm talking about is public now how do you understand the private subnet now within your it park if you see there will be some kind of security wherein usually they will be roaming only within the boundary of your buildings or your it park and they will be doing some check right so in that way they never go out so you can consider usually them as your private network or the similar example what we are giving is your database okay so this is the best way that you can think of so that now what we will do with this we will try to go to the next session in which we will try to understand what is the best practice and how do we start writing our terraform code which is nothing but our infrastructure as a code so that's all what we had for this session and i see you on the next video and for more such real time projects and training on latest devops tools contact us in these numbers and also don't forget to share the video and subscribe to our channel